This past fall, my hunting buddies and I went to Kamchatka in Russia. We shot a huge old boar brown bear. He was nine or ten feet tall and immensely blocky and heavily muscled. He was able to get away and we tracked him on and off for four days before coming across an interesting site. It was an area near a creek choked with strawberry bushes that looked like it had been the scene of an epic battle. It was rocky and gravelly, and it looked like two bulldozers had gone at each other. Saplings up to four inches in diameter were snapped like soda straws. Bushes ripped up, and fur was scattered. We assumed the injured boar had laid down the law about territory ownership to another boar. We were hot on his trail before we saw something rather curious. It was a large tree branch, four and a half to five feet long and about five to six inches in diameter at the big end and four inches at the smaller end. It had obviously been torn off a nearby tree. I looked twice because the big end had blood and fur on it. I assumed at the time, one of the bears had slammed into it while fighting. The next day we caught up to the boar. He was bedded in a deep thicket. We circled and got into position at the edge of a small clearing just as the boar came out. He was moving very slowly and stiffly up the mountain. One of my hunting buddies, JG, shot him with two shots from his 416 Wrigley, and that's when we caught an additional surprise. The boar was really beat up. Not fatally, but he was one sore battered bear and had some very unusual wounds from a bear fight. When we rolled him over, we noticed there were big areas on his chest and stomach where the fur was pulled out and claw marks visible. JG said it looked like something had jumped on his back and had its arms around him holding on while it bit. We first thought a Siberian tiger, but the marks were wrong. A tiger wouldn't pull fur out. It can't clench its paws into fists, and the claw marks were wide and shallow. They were spread wide apart between the fingers. If you hold your hand out and spread your fingers, they spread pretty far apart. Another bears don't. Big brown bears such as this one have claws up to four and a half to five inches long, but there are only four on the front paw, the fifth being a dew claw up where our wrist joint is. However, here there were five of these, one in an opposable thumb position. In other words, they appear to come from a very large pair of hands. What was just as weird was when the huge hide was off up to the neck. There were several large bite marks on the bear's neck and shoulders. The curious thing is they were not as deep as you would expect from a bear and the teeth marks were more rounded or molar-like. But most strangely, the whole bite mark was very horseshoe-shaped, 
whereas a bear's bite mark is much longer and narrower. Well, the long and short of it was, one of the local guides gave the following account of what had happened. The other guides agreed and looked at the sign fairly closely at the site before moving on. According to the guy, the boss boar had come up to the creek into the wind and surprised a female Bigfoot who was in his berry patch, whereupon he attacked her. The female Bigfoot's mate, a big male, probably nine feet tall, weighing 750 to 800 pounds and immensely strong, jumped the boar from cover where it had been feeding. The fight was on, rather horrific but brief. The female did not join in, but fled with her youngster. As soon as the female was safely out of danger, the male followed. It had inflicted some pretty severe bites to the bear. But the massively strong boar had got it off his back. The boar, the god said, had inflicted a severe bite to probably the male Bigfoot's thigh and several nasty off-balance pulse watts. If his feet had been under him to provide power and leverage, the male Bigfoot would have been crushed. The local guide said such encounters are rare, but do happen when they surprise each other. Now, was this true? Who knows? But my buddy JG, with 40 years of hunting experience all over the world, had taken several bears. He has skinned hundreds of animals, and he said those wound marks sure did not look like they came from another bear. The one other weird thing was that JG said that the bear really stunk especially on his back. Now a bear in the wild, damp, soggy, and muddy, smells like a musty old throw rug that's been lying on an earthen basement damp floor all winter. However, the smell on the boar's back was different. JG said the boar's back smelled foul like whatever was clinging there smelled bad and possibly even urinated on the boar while fighting. He likened the smell to a cross between the weak old napalm water buffalo he'd hid behind for three days in Vietnam and the wolverine scent stink we smelled in Alaska. Anyway, that's the story. No proof of any kind, but lots of interesting oddities. JG asked about tracking the family, but the guide said there wasn't enough money in the world to get them to do something as foolish as track a mad wounded protective Bigfoot. Besides, they said late in the fall, Bigfoot always went away from the coast to several super nasty hellhole little canyons that have natural hot springs. And they winter there 